This indictment revives the case against Baldwin. Special prosecutors brought the case before a grand jury in Santa Fe this week, months after receiving a new analysis of the gun that was used. Baldwin, lead actor and co-producer on the Western movie Rust, was pointing a gun at cinematographer Helena Hutchins during a rehearsal when that gun went off, killing her and wounding the director. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Alec Baldwin being charged with involuntary manslaughter yet again for the incident that happened on the set of the movie called Rust out there in New Mexico. Now, as you heard in the very beginning, and as you have heard over the past couple of years, during rehearsal, Alec Baldwin was on set with a gun with live ammunition in it. He pointed the weapon at Miss Hutchins. The gun went off, got fired, don't really know. We'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. But the gun goes off, Helena Hutchins gets hit, and she dies. May she rest in peace. One of the directors, Joel Sousa, was hit, but he survived. Now, originally, he was charged with involuntary manslaughter back in 2022, in January. Or it might have been 2023, I can't really remember. But shortly thereafter, the charge was dropped. The charge has been brought back, although it was slightly different. The first charge was brought about by the district attorney. This is a grand jury. Now, some are going to ask the question, is it double jeopardy? Can they charge him again for the same thing? Well, it's not double jeopardy because there was no adjudication. You understand? There was no decision on guilt or innocence because there was no trial. The case was dropped. He didn't get found innocent or guilty. It was just dropped. So, yes, they can bring it back. They said they were able to find new evidence in the case to bring it back, and the grand jury agreed. So here we are again. He's been charged yet again. Now, we got a video and some more things to get into, but let's look at an article right quick. This is on People Magazine, and the question, which, you know, it might be the elephant in the room, as I addressed a little bit um, ago in this video, how can Alec Baldwin be charged again for the shooting of Helena Hutchins? And they kind of get into it, but basically... What I said in the beginning, they kind of echo in here. But the main thing is that they found new information. Okay, I'm going to zoom in right here. It says special prosecutors and Carrie Morrissey and Jason Lewis dropped initial charges against Baldwin in April of last year, 23, citing new facts in the case and said at the time they reserved the right to recharge him. They announced in October after extensive investigation over the past several months, additional facts have come to light that we believe show Mr. Baldwin as criminal culpability in the death of Helena Hutchins and the shooting of Joel Sousa. Expert Kate Mangles, a criminal defense attorney based in Southern California, tells People Magazine about why that grand jury, upon seeing such new facts, decided to again determine whether Baldwin's involvement in the incident deserves a criminal trial. So I believe the initial charges brought about by the DA, now this is going to be a grand jury decision, so here we are. Um, that is Miss Elena Hutch. Miss you rest in peace. That's Alec Baldwin, obviously, in the center. And you have Joel Sousa on the right. Now, when I saw the charges got dropped, I'm like, okay, that's Hollywood doing Hollywood staying. This guy's untouchable. But maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong about that. And I think there's one particular thing that he said after the incident that may doom him. And we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. And you see, here we are. On CNN, Alec Baldwin charged for a second time in fatal rush shooting. And I guess that was him right there on the set of the show. And let me just read this piece right here because that's part of what I was talking about as far as what the charges were, who brought it, and what they are now. After Alec Baldwin has been indicted by New Mexico grand jury on charges connected to the 2021 fatal shooting on the set of the movie Rust, new court documents show Baldwin is charged with two counts of voluntary manslaughter. The first involuntary manslaughter charge against Baldwin is described in court documents as negligent use of a firearm. And the second is involuntary manslaughter without due caution or circumspection, which is detailed as an act committed with the total disregard or indifference to the safety of others. Both are fourth degree felonies. Okay. So we're going to get into a video here from, my main man over on Fox, Leo Terrell, 
this is pretty important what he says right here. Leo Terrell is, of course, a lawyer. What he says right here makes a lot of sense. Let's check it out. And if you want to see this video in full, link, as always, will be in the box. If you're not G, visit a link in the bio. Go to the correspondent article on the website. Uh, claimed that uh, he would never and did not pull the trigger. Here's what this weapons expert had to say. Watch. That would be contrary to my opinion and that of the FBI. Now, let's pause. Alec Baldwin said in an interview, let me just put, play it right here. He said he did not pull the trigger. Listen to this, then we're going to go back so you get full context. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So no. you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. So he says he didn't pull the trigger, but obviously that's not correct because in order for the weapon to go off, according to this expert and his testimony, and just a little bit of common sense, you have to have the trigger pull for it to go off. And they're going to get into why they say that's the case. And if you pull the trigger on the weapon and it goes off and somebody dies, I mean, at a certain point, you might be responsible, especially given the context of the set. Briefly, I'm going to get into that before you get back to the video. The, the context of the set, it was really irresponsible, kind of janky. You had guys... Uh, shooting live rounds in between scenes at beer cans and stuff like this. And you had live rounds mixed with dummy rounds. So apparently one of the weapons had a live round in it. He points the weapon at Helena Hutchins, pulls the trigger. Allegedly she gets hit and she dies. So he's being charged for that. Uh, the the reason that I think he could think that, though, is that because on these these uh, single action guns, it's such a short trigger press to activate it. Mm. So if he was just holding his finger on the trigger, not aware that he had moved it that tiny bit, and then he pulled the hammer back and released it, the gun would fire. Now, you know what? A little bit of gun safety, just a little bit of gun safety tips. What he's saying right here is 100 percent correct. One thousand percent correct. I have nothing to say to correct him. I'm talking about to the normies out there who don't know about guns. Uh, the best way to not pull the trigger is to not touch the trigger. Do not have your finger inside the trigger guard. That's why you see that, you know, guard around the trigger. That's why it's right there. You can rest your finger right there, rest it on the side, but don't put your finger inside the guard. Don't touch the trigger. If you don't touch the trigger, the gun is not going to go off. And if it does go off, then you have a faulty weapon, and that can be proven. We'll talk about that in a moment. Bit, and then he pulled the hammer back and released it. The gun would fire. Leo, what's your reaction to all this today? Welcome. I, I remember that. I remember that interview you had with him. And I'll tell you right now, that is the strongest piece of evidence. What Alex Baldwin did was go on George Stepanakis was the worst decision ever made. That was malpractice. Never should have made that admission. And if I was a prosecutor, that statement by Alex Baldwin, as far as whether or not he actually pulled the trigger and his admission that he didn't, I think there's a credibility issue on that issue alone. So I think, in my opinion, that is his biggest problem right now, Martha. Well, let me ask you about this, this FBI testing the weapon, right? And it, it sounds like they were pretty pretty rough with this very crucial piece of evidence and that they tested it. Um, the only way testers could get it to fire was by striking the gun with a mallet while the hammer was down and resting on the cartridge or pulling the trigger while it was fully cocked. The gun eventually broke during testing. A, I'm not sure why you wouldn't be using the exact same gun, a different version than the actual piece of evidence, because now they broke the gun that was actually used in this terrible tragedy. If, if I'm the attorney for Alec Baldwin, I call in the FBI. And you know who's going to be the star of the trial if there is a case? The judge. How much of this evidence regarding the gun replacement is going to be admissible? Because the gun, the original gun is broken. It's broken. And the FBI, I would call in the FBI to show the court that this expert on the part of the prosecution, Martha, is basically guessing. And so the trial judge is going to be very important as to what goes into evidence before the jury. Okay. Leo. Very well said. Shout out to my main man, Leo Terrell, over on Fox News. But yeah, they broke the weapon. I mean, the federales, I mean, come on. Why would you break the, the, the actual quote-unquote murder weapon? Why would you do that? You're breaking the evidence. I mean, like you said, you should do some testing on a, a, a similar weapon or test the weapon to see if it's a faulty weapon, but don't go so hard to where you got to break it. And if you got to do all that, if you got to do all that to get it to try and misfire and capture that, then obviously it, it wasn't faulty. But as I close, I want to say this. I think that 
there's a lot to blame to go around. I don't think it's just Alec Baldwin's fault. I think it's the armorer as well. Um, having live rounds right next to the dummy rounds. And I think that she, the armorer, was placed there because of nepotism. And then you had kind of a janky staff, unprofessional environment. And ultimately, if you pull the trigger or touch the trigger and the script didn't call for it, it shouldn't happen at that time, you are partly responsible as well as everybody on the set. If you are the main guy, you're the guy running the show, and the show is running janky, it's slipshot, it's dangerous, and then the danger of the set, which had been going on for a while, culminates with you taking somebody's life. I mean, at a certain point, somebody should be held responsible. Now, I don't know what the appropriate charge is, the amount of time for Alec Baldwin, but it's got to be something from my point of view. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what said you? What's your take on what's going on here? Do you think it's correct to recharge Alec Baldwin for this case? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. I'm not just going to sit here and say he did that on purpose. It was clearly an accident. But the accident was created from a workplace that was dangerous, unprofessional, not run properly. That was That's the whole thing here from my point of view. So if nothing else, the involuntary manslaughter charge comes from maintaining a dangerous workplace in which, again, it culminates in the leader, the head honcho, the boss, taking someone's life. And that can't happen. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.